Often when people enter the Basilica Cathedral of St. John the Baptist, the first thing they do is look up and marvel at the ceiling. They wonder what it is. It's a ceiling made of plaster in the Italianate style. It is an incredible handcrafted work of art. It is larger than the plaster ceilings of the House of Commons and Senate chambers at the Parliament of Canada in Ottawa. It is one of the largest decorated plaster ceilings to be found anywhere in the Western Hemisphere. Like the walls of the cathedral, the ceiling was begun in the late 1840s and early 1850s. It was entirely the work of the Conway brothers of Ireland, who with their descendants for the next five generations worked on that ceiling, modifying it, elaborating it, and maintaining it. The first ceiling installed in the Basilica after 1852 was flat and was painted white. It remained like this until 1903. It was surrounded by a decorative cornice consisting of a number of neoclassical elements, such as rosettes alternating with brackets, string courses, vines, which the Conways called running dogs, another string course, and then alternating acanthus leaves and lotus leaves. The elements of this cornice were known as ornaments and were carved by hand and then using wax from the church candles, the Conways made molds. To fill these molds, they poured in liquid plaster. And before the plaster set, they also put copper wire into the ornaments. Once the plaster set, the ornaments were turned out of the wax molds and using the copper wire were twist tied onto the rafters of the basilica's attic. And in the middle of the ceiling were what was called pendant drops. More neoclassical motifs, such as cherubs and acanthus leaves. Other ornaments were plaster seeds and flowers. The next major change came in 1903 to 1905, when Archbishop Howley worked with cathedral architect Jonas Barter and the painter and sculptor Dan Carroll and the next generation of Conway brothers. Howley designed a coffered ceiling and this was installed in raised panels about eight feet square in the spaces between the rafters of the attic. Again, this ceiling remained painted only white. In the late 1800s, the St. John's Gas and Light Company had gasolier lights installed in the cornice of the Basilica ceiling. And for a while, the church was illuminated in outline as a great cross from the ceiling with gas lights. They were soon replaced with electric lights. The final change to give us the ceiling we see today was made in 1954 to 55 to prepare for the cathedral's 100th birthday in 1955. The whole ceiling was finely painted in a multicolored treatment, polychromed and highlighted in gold leaf to resemble the ceiling of a Roman basilica. Some cathedrals have rose windows. This one doesn't. Instead, it has a rose in its ceiling. And that rose is a very ancient symbol in Christendom, a symbol of the Virgin Mary. In the Great Rose, symbols of the Virgin Mary are painted into the circular cameos in the 12 petals or panels in the roundel or rose of the ceiling. The symbols come from the Litany of Loretto, a litany of spontaneous praises to Mary, the Mother of God from the fourth century. A basilica was built around this house. In our basilica's great rose, this work of painting symbols of the litany was done by Leif Neandros of the Rambush Decorating Company of New York. Neandros previously had decorated camouflage 
at U.S. military installations and on naval vessels during World War II. The cameo images of the Virgin Mary in the basilica ceiling are found in the broad part of the leaves of the 12 petals of the great rose of the ceiling, 57 feet above the point where the nave forms a cross with the transept. That rose symbolizes Mary, the Theotokos, or God-bearer. Its presence in this cathedral is an explicit statement in religious art that this is a cathedral of Mary, under the patronage and protection of the Blessed Virgin. The best way to view these symbols is to stand in the center of the basilica, facing the high altar, and look overhead. The symbols represent... At 12 noon, the Queen of Heaven, the Regina Chaley, a crown with a laurel wreath. At 1 o'clock, the Ark of the Covenant, the Foderis Arca, an ark guarded by two angels. At 2 o'clock, Mother Most Pure, the Mater Purissima, with a lily. At 3 o'clock, Heaven's Gate, Janua Chaley, twin pillars or gateposts. At 4 o'clock, the Tower of David, the high tower with buttresses, the Taurus Davidica, a Davidica. At five o'clock, the Seat of Wisdom, Sede Sapientiae, a three-cornered seat. At six o'clock, the Mother of Divine Graces, the Mater Divina Gratia, symbolized by dove wings. At seven o'clock, the star of the sea or the morning star, Stella Maris or Stellar Matutina. And at eight o'clock, a house of gold, Domus Aurea. At nine o'clock, the refuge of sinners, symbolized by the anchor, the refugium peccatorum. At 10 o'clock, the mystical rose, Rosa Mystica. And at 11 o'clock, the Mirror of Justice, which shows Jesus and Mary holding a mirror, the Speculum Justitiae. So now you know one of the ways that the Virgin Mary, through the images symbolizing the Litany of Loretto, is represented in the art of this Basilica Cathedral. There are many other artistic representations of Mary in this basilica. Other Heritage Moments videos will explore their meaning and significance. You are most welcome to come and see them for yourself. For the Basilica Heritage Foundation, I'm John Fitzgerald. And I'm Ann Walsh.